Hantavirus was first discovered in the 1950s during the Korean War. Researchers identified it while investigating an outbreak of an illness among United Nations troops. The virus was named after the Hantan River area in South Korea, where the initial outbreak occurred. Hantavirus is primarily transmitted to humans through contact with the urine, droppings, or saliva of infected rodents. The most common route of infection is inhalation of aerosolized particles from contaminated rodent excreta. This can happen when disturbing rodent nests or cleaning up rodent droppings in poorly ventilated areas. Infection can also occur when a person touches objects or surfaces contaminated with rodent excreta and then touches their nose or mouth, though this is less common. Additionally, bites from infected rodents can transmit the virus, but this mode of transmission is rare. It's important to note that hantavirus is not transmitted from person to person, except in very rare cases of a specific strain in South America. The disease associated with the virus can vary, but in the Americas, it typically manifests as hantavirus pulmonary syndrome HPS, which can be severe and sometimes fatal. Hantavirus infections manifest through two distinct syndromes, each associated with different strains of the virus. Hantavirus pulmonary syndrome HPS, and hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome HFRS, and the symptoms can vary between these conditions. Hantavirus pulmonary syndrome HPS, starts with symptoms that are deceptively flu-like, appearing one to five weeks after exposure to infectious material from rodents. Early signs include fatigue, fever, and muscle aches, particularly in large muscle groups such as the thighs, hips, back, and shoulders. Other initial symptoms might be headaches, dizziness, chills, and abdominal issues like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and pain. The situation can escalate quickly to more severe problems, such as coughing and shortness of breath, indicative of respiratory distress. This may rapidly develop into a critical condition where the lungs fill with fluid, known as pulmonary edema, which can be life-threatening. Hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome HFRS, typically develops within one to two weeks after exposure, although the range can extend from a few days up to two months. The symptoms start with intense headaches, back and abdominal pain, fever, chills, nausea, and visual disturbances. Some patients may also experience facial flushing, redness of the eyes, or a rash. As the disease progresses, it can lead to more severe complications such as low blood pressure, acute shock, vascular leakage, and acute kidney failure, which can be severe enough to require dialysis. Both conditions are serious and can progress rapidly, necessitating prompt medical attention. Treatment for both HPS and HFRS focuses on supportive care, which may include respiratory support for HPS and renal dialysis for HFRS, depending on the severity and progression of the symptoms. Treatment for hantavirus infections is focused on supportive care since there are no specific antiviral treatments approved for hantavirus pulmonary syndrome HPS, or hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome HFRS. Early recognition and hospitalization are crucial for managing the disease and improving outcomes. Patients suspected of having a hantavirus infection based on their symptoms and potential exposure history are typically hospitalized for close monitoring and immediate medical response. The mainstay of treatment involves supportive care tailored to the specific symptoms and complications experienced by the patient. This includes monitoring fluid levels and electrolytes, maintaining proper oxygenation and blood pressure, and treating any secondary infections that may occur. In cases of HPS, severe respiratory distress may develop, necessitating supplemental oxygen or mechanical ventilation to manage acute respiratory distress syndrome ARDS. The goal is to ensure that the patient can breathe adequately while the lungs recover. For patients with HFRS, where kidney function may be impaired, Specific interventions such as dialysis may be required to manage renal failure and maintain fluid and electrolyte balance until kidney function can recover. Additionally, while specific antivirals are not available, medications like antipyretics for fever and analgesics for pain are often used to alleviate symptoms. Continuous monitoring is also essential for the timely detection and management of potential complications such as shock, organ failure, or severe bleeding with prompt interventions to address these issues. Post-recovery, 
patients are educated about the risks of rodent exposure and effective preventive measures to avoid reinfection. The effectiveness of treatment largely depends on how quickly the virus is identified and supportive care initiated. There is ongoing research into more specific treatments and vaccines for hantavirus, highlighting the need for further medical advancements in this area.